Imagine a chameleon perched on the branch. One moment is bright green, blending perfectly with the leaves. And tiny moments later, without changing who it is, it shifts to deep brown. Same animal, same skin, just a different orientation to the world. And suddenly it behaves quite differently. Now here's a twist. Molecules do this too. It's in the nature of scientists to classify objects into well-defined categories. For example, we classify substituents as acceptors or donors. Take the methoxy group as an example. From organic textbooks, you know that methoxy is a donor group. Its non-bonding electrons can stabilize a positively charged carbocationic center. But it also could be an acceptor. Just like a chameleon that changes its color in different environments, the methoxy group and many other functional groups can change depending on the reaction conditions. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through this kind of chameleonic behavior of functional groups. By the end, you will have new eyes to see one of the hidden angles of organic chemistry. I created this video based on a paper by Professor Eagle Alabugin. Check the description for the link to this paper and more. Here is a methoxy group that stabilizes the carbocationic center by resonance. Usually we demonstrate this resonance with electron pushing arrows, but I'm gonna go deeper. Have you ever noticed the orientation of the methoxy group? There are two conformations for the orientation of the methoxy. In the first one, the angle between the methoxy group and the phenyl ring is zero. This is called planar conformation. As you see, the methyl group and the phenyl ring are coplanar. Now let's rotate the methoxy group 90 degrees. In this conformation, the angle between the methyl group and the phenyl ring is 90 degrees. It's called perpendicular conformation. The point is, the benzylic carbocation is stabilized by the planar conformation. To understand the reason, let's see the resonance through the lens of orbital interaction. In this compound, three types of orbital interact to give resonance. The first one is the empty p orbital of the carbocation. The second is the conjugated p orbital of the benzene ring. And third is the non-bonding orbital of the oxygen atom. As you see, all of these orbitals are coplanar and are in the same phase, so the non-bonding electrons of the oxygen atom can stabilize the empty p orbital of the benzylic carbocation by orbital interaction. Having said that, in perpendicular conformation, the p orbital that holds the non-bonding electrons is perpendicular to the phenyl ring, so there is no interaction. Now let's go through the benzylic carbonion. Unlike the carbocation, the flow of electrons is inverted. In other words, electrons move from the carbonion to the oxygen atom. But how can we rationalize this through orbital interaction? The non-bonding electrons of oxygen don't help here because it doesn't make sense for electrons to move from the carbonion to the non-bonding electrons. Look at the perpendicular conformation. As you see, the empty anti-bonding carbon-oxygen bond is aligned with the phenyl ring and it's ready to accept electrons from the carbonion. Here is a simplified molecular orbital of the carbon-oxygen bond. In the bonding orbital, which is full of electrons, the orbitals are oriented along the bond between the atoms. But in the anti-bonding molecular orbital, the orbitals are oriented outside the bond. The back lobe of the anti-bonding orbital interacts with the p orbitals of the phenyl ring and stabilizes the carbonion. So electrons move from the carbonion to the empty anti-bonding orbital of the carbon-oxygen bond. And this is possible because of the high electronegativity of the oxygen atom. In other words, the anti-bonding orbital is low enough in energy to be accessible to the carbonion. So you see how the methoxy group is converted from a donor to an acceptor by a simple rotation. In the planar conformation, the oxygen atom donates its non-bonding electrons. But in the perpendicular conformation, it accepts electrons from the carbonion through its anti-bonding orbital. This kind of orbital interaction is called stereoelectronic effect. If you want to know more about this interesting topic, I strongly suggest you watch this video I've linked in the description. Now let's see the synthetic application of this concept. And diens can undergo thermal cyclization with lithium naphthalenide to produce a reduced indine product. The reaction passes through a dianion species that is formed by treatment with lithium. After that, abstraction of proton leads to the final product. Notice that the product contains two types of double bonds, one endocyclic and one exocyclic. As you see, the negative charge accumulates on the endocyclic double bond. From introductory organic chemistry, you know that if you put an acceptor in a parallel position, it can stabilize the negative charge, leading to the more stable transition state. 
This reaction becomes even more interesting when we use a non-symmetrical starting material. For example, in this compound, there is a methoxy group on the phenyl ring. Now there is a bias in the distribution of the products. As you see, two possible products can form, but the ratio is 19 to 1. That clearly shows that one of the possible pathways is much more stable. In the first option, this pi bond attacks this carbon atom to construct a 5 membered ring. In the second option, the pi bond attacks the opposite carbon atom. Now let's take a look at the dianion species in each pathway. In the first one, the negative charge ends up para to the methoxy group. But in the outer pathway, the anion at the end of cyclic ring cannot interact with the methoxy group. If you consider the methoxy group as a donor group, you would predict that the para-stabilized pathway should be less favored. But it's actually the major product. So here, the methoxy group works as an acceptor. Let's take a look at the transition state of the major product, where the new bond is forming between two alkynes. Here, the negative charge is located para to the methoxy group which adopts a perpendicular conformation. We can see that the negative charge is stabilized by the orbital interaction with entire bonding orbital of the methoxy group. We can illustrate this effect using this resonance form. Because the electrons flow toward the entire bonding orbital of the carbon-oxygen bond, that bond becomes weaker, the carbon-oxygen bond breaks, and the metal group bears a negative charge. Amide bond is another functional group that shows chemialionic behavior. All of you know that the nitrogen can resonate with the carbonyl group. Because of this resonance, it's very stable. It looks simple, but let's see the resonance from a different perspective. Here is the non-bonding orbital of the nitrogen atom interacting with the pi star orbital of the carbonyl group. The carbonyl pi system includes two molecular orbitals. One of them is filled with pi electrons, and the other is empty pi star orbital. In the resonance, the non-bonding electrons of the nitrogen atom move into this empty pi star molecular orbital. So nitrogen is a donor and the carbonyl is an acceptor. To do this, the orbitals must be in the same plane. This is called the planar conformation. But what happens when they rotate the carbon-nitrogen bond? In this new conformation, the non-bonding orbital of the nitrogen atom becomes perpendicular to the pi system. So there is no resonance. This conformation is called twisted conformation. Instead, we get another type of orbital interaction, one you might not be familiar with. Because of the rotation, the carbonyl group now uses its pi electrons. The field pi orbital of the carbonyl group interacts with the anti bonding orbital of the carbon nitrogen bond. So now the carbonyl group is the donor, and the nitrogen atom is the acceptor. In other words, the pi electrons from the carbonyl move into the empty anti bonding orbital of the carbon nitrogen bond. This new interaction has a few consequences. First, the non bonding electrons of the nitrogen are more accessible because they are no longer involved in the resonance. In other words, in this conformation, the nitrogen atom is more basic. Second, the carbonyl group becomes more electrophilic because its pi electrons are partially depleted as they move into the empty carbon-nitrogen anti-bonding orbital. Third, the alpha hydrogen becomes more acidic, also because electron density is pulled away from the carbonyl group. In other words, in this twisted conformation, the carbonyl group is stronger acceptor compared to the planar conformation. It's interesting that all of these changes happen just by a simple rotation. A normal amide bond tends to adopt a planar conformation because it's more stable due to resonance, which is not present in the twisted conformation. But in some cases, the amide bond is forced to adopt a twisted conformation. Take this amide as an example. In the presence of nucleophiles like thiophenol, the amine is replaced by nucleophile at 18 degree without any catalyst. This unusual reactivity is comparable to acyl chloride. The reason is that the resonance normally present in an amide bond is prevented because of steric hindrance between these two groups. So the molecule is forced to adopt a twisted conformation in which the carbonyl group is more electrophilic and that is responsible for high reactivity.